Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis is a coaster that I'd say was ahead of its time. Manufactured by Philadelphia Debogging Coasters, or PTC for short, this was the longest, tallest, and fastest roller coaster in the world when it first opened in 1976. It was a big deal back then, but does it hold up over 47 years later? I think it absolutely does, and I'll explain why in my review of this classic wooden roller coaster. Like all the other coaster reviews I've done up until this point, let's start off with the stats, which were record-breaking when Screaming Eagle opened. It has a max height of 110 feet, and the max speed of this coaster is 62 miles an hour. The latter in particular is impressive for a wooden coaster, as the fastest wooden coaster in the world as when I'm recording this is Goliath at Six Flags Great America, and that goes 72 miles an hour, 10 miles an hour faster than Screaming Eagle. I should note that I'm not counting Lightning Rod at Dollywood for this because the majority of the track on that coaster is steel, so it's not a true wooden coaster. Screaming Eagle features 3,872 feet of track, including two drops of 97 and 87 feet. While these stats may not be anything to shout out by today's standards, stats are not everything with this one. However, I like to imagine that Screaming Eagle felt like a giga coaster when it first opened, seeing as it was the tallest, fastest, and longest coaster in the world at the time. The location of Screaming Eagle is one of its biggest strengths. Much like Boss in the same park, this coaster is located on the hill in the back of Six Flags St. Louis, and the layout is hidden within the woods. This usually makes it harder to get some off-ride footage of the ride since a lot of the layout is hidden, but if you go to Six Flags St. Louis early in the season, the leaves on the trees hadn't grown in yet, leaving a lot of the layout exposed. This is your best chance to get off-ride shots of Screaming Eagle, and the same can also be said for Boss. When the leaves on the trees are fully grown in, Screaming Eagle makes a bold first impression when you approach the park. The wood really pops, especially on bright summer mornings. Furthermore, the wooded setting provides for an outstanding night ride, but more on that later. Depending on when you visit the Six Flags St. Louis, your queue experience for Screaming Eagle can be hit or miss. If you go on a busy day, I strongly recommend doing this coaster first thing in the morning for a few reasons. For one, this coaster doesn't always have the fastest dispatches, especially if they're running one train. This means the line can move very slow, and maybe even make it the longest line of any coaster in the park. I remember during Fright Fest opening weekend in 2022, every coaster had one train running that first night, and almost all of them were a five minute wait the whole time. The only exception was Screaming Eagle, which had an hour wait. A major contributor to this ride getting a longer line is Catwoman Whip. This is the park's new for 2022 attraction, and is located right next to Screaming Eagle's entrance. Being one of the tallest rides in the park, it naturally draws a lot more people to that area of the park early in the day. If you're trying to get on the credits as fast as possible, the two reasons I just mentioned have the potential to set you back by a decent amount of time if you don't do Eagle first. Once you get into the station, you can select any row of your choice. I think the best seat depends on what you're looking for. If you want more airtime, I think the back is the place to be, but it can be rough at times, especially if you're riding in the red train. This is why I think the best seat for an airtime-centered experience is the second back row left side of the blue train. If you're looking for a ride experience that isn't too rough, I personally recommend the front row. There's still some airtime up there, but it's quite a bit smoother than the back. My personal favorite seat on Screaming Eagle is the front row of the blue train because this coaster also has a great sense of speed, and the blue train always runs smoother than the red train from my experience. Plus, I do tend to prefer speed over airtime in a lot of cases. That's why I usually ride the front over the back on this coaster. Once it's your turn to ride, you board one of two PTC trains with individual ratcheting lap bars. I will say that these are some of the better PTC lap bars I experienced because even when they're at their lowest point, they probably won't even touch you. That's especially true if you're in the left seat in the second back row of the blue train because at that restraint's lowest point, that lap bar is a click above all the others. Let's get into this coaster's ride experience. Once the train dispatches out of the station, you go over a large section of straight track that approaches the lift hill. Once you get onto the lift hill, you pass under the ride's first airtime hill and then climb 110 feet into the air. On the way up, you get a great view of Six Flags St. Louis if you look to the right. Once at the top, the train navigates a turnaround to line itself up with the first drop. You'll get some decent laterals throughout this whole turn, and then you plunge down the 92-foot first drop. In the back, you get some decent floater airtime, but it's an afterthought when compared to what's coming. Screaming Eagle then goes over the first airtime hill, and you'll get a pop of airtime on the front while going over the top of it. You then climb up and over the ride's second airtime hill, and this one is too drawn out to deliver any airtime on the front. The coaster then drops 87 feet down into the woods. This drop gives some decent airtime on the back. From here on, you're surrounded by trees, and you rock it over two low-to-the-ground bunny hills. The first one gives some solid airtime on the front and the back, and the second gives a stronger pop of airtime up front. Screaming Eagle then climbs into an elevated turn. This is probably the strongest airtime moment on the ride when you're in the front row, as you get a good flow ejector pop going into this turn. The laterals aren't anything to shout out, but the drop off of it is a good ejector pop in the back. Screaming Eagle then navigates the low-to-the-ground speed hill that I've nicknamed the Dud Hill. As you can probably expect by the nickname I gave it, this hill never gives any airtime on the front or back since it's too drawn out, and I've never come even close to lifting out of my seat. The coach then climbs into the far turnaround. This turn has the best laterals on the ride by far, especially if it's hauling. Something else kind of cool about this turn is that it runs right next to the boss's lift hill. Now the dispatches happen to be in a certain way on both rides, you'll be going through this turn while riders on boss are crossing the top of the lift hill. Scream and Eagle then drops off this turnaround, and this is by far the best part of the ride when you're in the back of the train. Those in the back get some insane ejector airtime coming down that drop. This is the main reason why I think the back has the best airtime. Even up front, I sometimes get a little bit of floater airtime on this drop. You then speed over a brief section of straight track before climbing up into the ride's final turn, giving those up front a quick pop of floater airtime. You get some decent laterals before dropping off this turn, which provides another great moment of flow ejector airtime for those in the back. You then go over one more bunny hill that barely gives any airtime, if at all. Screaming Eagle then climbs up into the final brake run, giving everyone one last moment of airtime before coming to a stop. If the ride is hauling into the brakes, prepare for a quick stop. That concludes your ride experience on Screaming Eagle. Before I give Screaming Eagle a final score, let's discuss the awesome night ride this coaster has. While the wooded setting makes it harder to get good shots,
shots to the right throughout most of the year, it makes for an extremely dark night ride. This makes it feel so much faster and even more out of control than what it usually is. While Outlaw Run does have my favorite night ride in Missouri, I keep going back and forth between this and Bosch for the second best night ride in the state, along with the best night ride Six Flags St. Louis. Be sure to get a night ride on this coaster if you can because it's the best way to experience it. Also, if you see the moon shining near the top of the lift hill, the light from it will illuminate the track in the woods. Despite this making the layout not as dark when you ride it, riding Scream Eagle with the moonlight on the track is a must do because flying through the moonlit trees is a magical experience, and I can say that because I've experienced it multiple different times. As for what I'd give Scream and Eagle for a final score, I'm going to give it a very solid 9 out of 10. The main reason why I'm giving this coaster such a high score is because it's a sentimental favorite of mine. Scream and Eagle is a coaster that got me into being an enthusiast in November of 2014, and it's the reason why I'm on YouTube today. Outside of the sentimental value I have for this ride, I enjoy the great sense of speed through its fast-paced layout with solid airtime and good laterals. Scream and Eagle is also quite a bit smoother than you might expect, assuming you're not on a wheel seat. While it's not as smooth as, say, Mystic Timbers at King's Island, for a coaster that opened over 45 years ago, Scream and Eagle is quite smooth for its age. The reason why I can't give it a perfect 10 is because some of the airtime moments don't deliver, especially the Dud Hill. However, I'm not going to let that take away from all that Screaming Eagle does well. After all, this coaster opened back in the 70s, so it was a big deal for the time. While it has gone now classed over time, I think it holds up very well to several modern day thrill rides. Out of the 294 coasters I've written as of when I'm recording this, Screaming Eagle lands at number 22, and is my third favorite at Six Flags St. Louis. Those are just my thoughts on Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. What do you think of this coaster? Is this your favorite classic wind coaster, or is there another one you prefer? Be sure to comment your thoughts about Screaming Eagle in the comments down below. Also, be sure to let me know what coaster you want to see me review, and I'll see if I can do it. Of course, before I click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel and like we saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you later.